Okay. Right. You ready? I'm ready. All right, episode 14 of the Low Sodium Podcast. This is Chris. Say what's up, Rob. What up, guys? And uh, today we're talking about the game of love. The, <laughs> the game <laughs> of love. So I uh, ran across an article with, uh, oh man, it's going to make me use my whole screen. That, that's wild. Anyway, I uh, ran across an article with uh, Bobby Lee. He is a uh, comedian. Used to be on Mad TV, I do believe. Uh, but he broke up with his longtime girlfriend a little while ago um, because Starfield's coming out. And uh, he knew he was going to be spending so much time on his game that he wouldn't be able to give her the time that she needed. Uh, he was talking about playing this game for like 16 hours in a day. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm playing it 16 hours a day, and I don't want to be in a relationship where they're like, we're going to the park. I don't want to do that. So, um, with that, man, what's your take? What, what's ah, so he's an idiot, first of all, because it's, <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen his his girlfriend. She's pretty hot, and the the fact that he broke up with her because he is committing 16 hours out of a day to play a video game is an idiot. I mean, I play video games all the time, and it's one of those things like you have, you have to make the time for also for your, for your loved one. And sometimes like when it comes to me in France, like I'll spend the rest the whole day with her. She goes to sleep. That's when I pull out my switch, my <laughs> Xbox two, uh, two or three hours in and then I go to bed. I mean, sometimes like I remember also like for work, Assassin's Creed, uh, Valhalla. I play like 20 to 30 minutes on it every day uh, for the last, I remember from August of 2021 all the way up to November or something like that. 30 yeah, that days. game's long for no fucking reason. Exactly. It's, it's super long, right? <laughs> that game's long. But like, I woke up before France, I had my, co- my coffee and, and you know, I, I drank it, I played it and I enjoyed it. Uh, but I am not willing to sacrifice my relationships for a video game. Now, so, if my if 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 somebody tells me like it's either me or your Xbox, then that's that's a different situation. I'm like, and I, giving you so giving you an ultimatum would change your view on this. If if like you got into like you're yeah, not married, let's let's put let's put let's build a scenario, right? You're not married, right? You've been with this person, let's say about a year. And they notice that you like to play video games. Like you play like for a few hours on the weekend each day, like Saturday, Sunday, you play for about four hours a day. So totally about eight hours a weekend. And they're like, I don't like that. It's either you, me or the game. You're like, screw you. I pick my Xbox. It's not that I pick my Xbox. It's that if you, if you really love someone, if you really are in a love relationship, you're not going to put your loved one in a predicament like that where like yeah. it's either you or me or, like, yeah. or either the Xbox or, or me and at the end of the day like there's a lot of things to consider like if you have a family obviously yeah yeah it, but don't, like it, that shows a lot from from that person if they're putting an ultimatum and a lot of relationships get kind of messy because they put ultimatums on I mean my one of my friends he, he he recently got a divorce and it was it had nothing to do with video games but it was basically his wife's said that like uh like he did she didn't understand the military life he was deployed yeah. and she didn't like georgia when we were first stationed in georgia uh you know it, it was rough on her but at the same time, she also was very adamant about him not playing video games because for her, it's like, if you play video games, you're dumb. You're wasting your time. Mind you, she, it, it, it's, not like, it, it's not like she was a saint either. Apparently, she loved Legend of Zelda and she used to play Legend of Zelda all over the place in the Switch, right? Yeah. So she's putting an ultimatum on him, but she and is then also... she's not living by that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it was a very controversial relationship, but by putting so much pressure on him like that, and then 
he abide by that. Like he did. And he still got a divorce. You know, it's one of those yeah, things. It just know, says a like, lot about the relationship. So from like, so, okay. Like going back, right. Like I had that kind of scenario where I was starting out streaming. Right. And this is like 2013 going into 2014. And back then, um, you could actually gain viewers from just streaming. Like you didn't have to do anything outside of that. So I was putting in time like on the weekend and stuff to build that up. Um, I think I had gotten up to at certain points about 400 viewers like in, in a stream, which is big back then. It's big now. Um, but I was putting a lot of time into it. And so my wife at the time was like, yo, like, you know, you're doing all this, you know, it, you're not spending any time with me, this and that. And I stopped, you know, I stopped for a while. Um, it's something I really wanted to do, but I stopped doing it. You know, like I even slowed down the amount of games and stuff that I was playing just so that I could spend that time if she was feeling, you know, neglected. Um, we did have talks later and like the understanding that people have a thing that they're, that they like, they like to do, whether that's watching sports, working on cars, manicuring, you know, a garden, uh, taking care of their lawn or, or playing video games. Everybody has that thing that they want to do. And for me, mine was playing video games, right? So, like, yeah, I do, you know, at that time, I did need to not play as much as I was doing. You know what I mean? I'm married, mm -hmm. you know, I'm at work, and then I was coming in trying to do kind of like a second job with streaming or whatever. But, you know, it, balancing that is really hard. And, again, if you care for somebody, you know, you're not going to sit here and sit on the game for 16 hours out of the day. Like that, that, that's the wild part to me. But it, my, my other side of this though, is that she, when she got into a relationship with him, she knew that this is what he does. Like he's not, you, you get what I'm saying? He, this mm -hmm. isn't a new habit for him. Right. So if she's unsatisfied with that and he knows that, I think it's probably a smart move. If he finds enjoyment in doing it, he knows he's going to do it and he knows he's not going to be there for her, It's probably a smart move for him to be like, yo, we just probably should break up. Because I can't give you what you want. Yeah. 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 yeah it, it, <laughs> it's still wild as fuck, though. Like, yo, I'm, it, about, I'm about to put 16 hours a day in the Starfield. That's crazy. Yo, right? like, it's wild. Like, I'm I, going I, to... I, I can I can do that. I, like, I, I could play video. I'll be honest. I can play a video game up to, like, three or four hours. Uh, especially in the daytime. Like in in the nighttime, I can play a lot of hours. Like if yeah. if it's a weekend, and I'm by myself, like if it's nighttime, like I'll start playing around nine, and I won't be done until like three or four o'clock in the morning. Well, that was yeah, that was young me. But nowadays, I do feel like shit whenever I play too much. Like in the daytime, it's like I should be using my Doing time something more else. Yeah, I don't know. Like so, right now, because I don't I don't get as much time to play anymore. So like I know like today and yesterday like I've been playing Spider Man Remastered on the um, Steam Deck, which we can talk about a little bit later. But I've been enjoying it. It's it's but I do realize that like I've been had my face in there too much because now my daughter's running up and she's like I want to try and I hand her the Steam Deck and now she's just she's playing and she's running around with, with like Spider Man. So it's like okay I I gotta chill out a little bit you know so yeah it's I've done I've done several twenty four hour streams. Right, twenty four uh, hours, twenty four stream. hours streams. I've played Jesus. Grand Theft. Auto. I've done it on Grand Theft Auto and Fallout, uh, Fallout Four when that came out, and then I did one on. I want to say it was like a variety hour where I played like a bunch of different stuff for like twenty four hours. Right? Don't advise it. It is it is horror. It's as bad as it sounds. It makes things not as enjoyable as they can be. Um, you no, know, I can't. But, I can never know. Yeah. It. it it was a thing back then that that was kind of like how you mm -hmm. it, it was just a thing you did on twitch back then so no no but yeah I, i've done i've done this I, several I, times i've heard it I, i've definitely heard it i i just i guess i would never like i think that's that's the secret of my my success in, in my relationship is i i just would never if the, the person tells me to stop i i will stop and i will go out and enjoy myself outside yeah and uh, I will do a lot of activities. Like yesterday, we went to the city, went to a nice restaurant in Brooklyn, spent yeah. the night in the city. Like I didn't bring my switch or anything. I was just enjoying 
my company. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a good there's definitely a balance that needs to be had in like okay, like yeah, this is what you enjoy. This is media, but I think that's part of, part of like a lot of people's problems too. Is like gaming is who they are and it's not what they enjoy. You get what I'm saying? Like mm. I don't ever use like I don't uh, refer I to it. myself as a gamer, right? Like I like to me it has negative connotations since Gamergate, and so I don't Gamer I don't Gate. do it. Yeah, you don't remember that? No, I know. I Please, was. Anita Sar. I think her name was Anita Sarkeesian, and like this whole thing, it like all oh, happened like 2014, man. Like it it's wild a, to me that a Russian, like, right? Or something in Russian? Spider? No, no, man. It was like this whole thing is how you got like eight chan and all that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. You're gonna have to do some. Uh, I'm gonna have to send you some links after this. You gotta, you gotta catch no, up. No, but man. T- uh, say, say, I, I don't think a lot of our, our, our. Again, I think I. I, I think anybody watching this knows what Gamergate is. I, I honestly do. So right. basically, there was uh, a lot of uh, fem- some female journal gaming journalists, um, you know, were calling out some things, stuff like sexism, whatever. And basically, groups on like Reddit, 4chan, um, essentially like went crazy over it. Uh, Saying like they were sleeping with, uh, they were sleeping with certain people to get access to things that they weren't real gaming gamers, they weren't real journalists, uh, that, like, like all this stuff, and then like it just came, it started to get into like harassing, uh, these these female journalists, these uh, like it just it blew up. I didn't so at the time I really wasn't following it. Like I saw like some articles and whatnot, and I like I was like okay whatever. But then like two years later, like things were weird. There was a lot more um anti-female energy in like the gaming space you know what i mean like you, you get what i'm saying like uh we female bro- streamers being I mean, uh yeah we've broken through that though because there's yeah. a lot of female st- i think i think no no, a- no 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 like right now the, the just- number of gamers and fem- like it's not that like that they have they don't have access to anything it's just that they're more likely to be attacked ah. and 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 harassed and stuff like that that's kind of what the gamergate stuff is but again, it, it's like I didn't follow it all the way through, but like it's it was a hot it was a hot issue like 2014, mm-hmm. like 20, 2016, 20, somewhere in there. Like it was like the span of just like craziness in, in the gaming industry. It was it was kind of wild. OK, well, yeah. yeah. OK. But uh, yeah, man. Well, anyway, point is, I don't we we, we have a lot to learn. Yeah. I would never sacrifice my relationships for gaming. I do realize I, that like it has become a little bit more complicated because I was thinking about this uh, going off the subject a little bit. It's like, there's so many good video games now compared to like 10 years ago, you know, like like 10 years ago, triple A games were like few and far in between. Nowadays you get a lot of triple A, but also there's a lot of good like independent uh games that are you're like wow i really need to yeah, try like, this and it's just to, yeah it's a lot it's a lot of it and i'm trying to catch up like i'm still you know i'm still it's impossible tr- yeah I'm just, it's, it's like i you know I, I did a video on it like quitting my like basically saying like i'm quitting trying to finish my backlog right because there's new things i want to play and life keeps happening right and there's no way like I have a few like I've completed the much I would say about 58 percent of my steam library I've played through and I've beaten or put a good amount of time into the games right so there's a there's a good chunk that like I haven't touched it's about 30 percent of the games I haven't really touched at all and this is like I don't think I can I'm don't think I'm ever going to make it through it you know what I mean and then you know new stuff is coming out like I just I, I bought know. spider-man and I've been playing it. But I thought that you already I thought you already played Spider Man. I have. But not I on have. the Steam Deck. <laughs> not on the Steam Deck. And it runs really well and it's I, really I, fun. I, I saw so. that. I saw that. I'm excited yeah, to man. get the Steam Deck Steam Deck in October. Did you get the old uh switching over to things that we played and games that we played? Oh, I got the OLED. Yeah. I How is it? I, I I personally love it. The screen yeah. is a game changer for, for the Switch OLED. And I am enjoying the vid- my video games way more than when I had the original. Uh, yeah. I've been playing a lot of my favorite game in the Switch, which is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. 
I got Xenoblade Chronicles three. I hear good things about that. But I want I for for some reason I want to replay my old game. You know, like there's a meme like you get these new games, but you're actually playing your old game. So that's what I'm yeah. doing before jumping into Xenoblade Chronicles three. It's just playing replaying Xenoblade Chronicles two. It's a it's a very good game. It's a definitely. I, I was very surprised with the story, the music, the the voice acting. I thought that the whole the whole game as a whole, like even though there are some sections that are boring, side quests when it comes to uh, JRPGs, side quests are always so boring. It's like I I, I don't know if you notice JRPGs suck at side quests. Uh, they're not, and and I I honestly think that Witcher three uh, games like Witcher three really spoil us. Because yeah. those side quests were just so well developed, and then you're trying to like get the same reaction for or same, you know, same enjoyment for these JRPGs, and they're not really delivering. Go get, oh, get me all these items, uh, fight this yeah. enemy. It's like it's the same bullcrap. So like, is that's it, the, is it uh, random encounters for Xenoblade? Yeah, uh, no, you can see the. Okay. You can see it. So it's not it's not that bad. It's not no, it's like not, old school. Okay. It's not it's not yeah, it's not old school like that. That's, yeah, man. So All right. Spider-Man. Go for it. We've all played it, right? Like it's good. We know we know it's a good game. I had like playing it like I've laid down in my bed, I've gone out and sat on the couch. I've you know, um, I have the resume, you know, like the sleep feature where like you just press the button and it starts yeah. back up to where you were at. Um, everything is cool. Runs amazingly. Sounds really good. Looks really good. Um, there I are feel some there's points. a but. The, the only real but that I have is that the battery life, I get I get off battery, I can get about an hour. You know what I mean? Which, you know. Oh, from the Steam Deck? An hour? From the Steam Deck. Yeah, from this game. Like, oh, I've because been it's ton. so powerful. Like, yeah, okay. it, it's drawing so much and it's doing so much that I get about an hour. Like, oh, wow. I can play Hades, um, Hades on this thing. I can get about two to three if, like, I'm just playing Hades. Like, non-stop. so the Steam Deck battery isn't the best. It's well, I mean, again, you got to think about what you're playing, like what games you're playing. If you're playing something light and uh, not as intensive, you're gonna get you know a decent amount of time on that battery. But if you're playing if you're playing something uh, like a triple A level game, which it can handle, it can play absolutely fine. Um, it's just you're going to have to plug up sooner than later. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, like, it's, I, I don't think it's a bad thing, though, because there's outlets in my living room. There's outlets in my bedroom. You know what I mean? Only like if I'm on the go and like I'm on the plane, I don't think I'm going to play Spider Man. You get what I'm saying? I might play something smaller just so that I can have entertainment throughout that flight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm excited for for the Steam Deck, but but I really enjoy my Switch OLED, so I I I'm excited to 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 travel and bring my my Steam Deck and or my yeah. Switch OLED. And it, it's 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 a fun activity, right? Like sometimes, like when right before the bed, right right before bed, I turn on the Switch and I just enjoy it a couple of minutes and then fall asleep. So that's good. I love that. I love that about the video games. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's uh let's go to our next subject. Our next subject is the Sandman. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, there so, we go. Okay. So so the, go ahead, walk through it. Walk through it. Okay. Give, give us give us a synopsis of it. So a, a well, synopsis meaning like the uh, like just in summary. general, what's it about? Yeah. All right. So it is about. It's basically a story about gods, but specifically the god of dreams. And the god of dreams is the one that it ha- lives in the world of dreams where when people actually dream or have nightmares, they travel to his dream world and experience those nightmares or those dreams. He is basically, a, he uses dreams to bring out hope in people and he uses, he uses nightmares to teach people uh, certain values or certain things that they shouldn't be doing and or, or warnings. It, so like he's he does all of this. And but then he gets captured by a human 
and the Earth realm. And the reason why is because he was actually trying to capture death and instead captured the dream or Morpheus. He's known as Morpheus. So that's how the story begins. And like after he is gone for a couple of years because he was captured and he was put in this capsule, like what happened to the world when he is gone and apparently there's some catastrophes that happen some incidents that happen and that's I think where it's the really story implied that like our current situation in the world is based on the fact that he was gone right so world war one or two ah. uh, like all that stuff like like it implies that a lot of the bad things that are happening in the world are simply because that He's gone. dream was gone yeah. yeah so with all that being said did you enjoy it? I enjoyed the first six episodes. Okay. I what enjoyed were, the what six. Were wrong, what were wrong with the last four? So th- let me just say what, what we're right about the first six. Um, the, the first six really introduced uh, the dream world, his visitations to hell, um, the acting. That's po- very powerful scene with death, that he is walking with that- death. I like not to not to cut off what you're saying, but that is definitely the best episode uh, abso- of, of the show. Abs- I absolutely agree. And, but then there was another episode that came in. I think it was the episode with him and uh, his friend that lasts forever. Yeah, that was a really good episode too, yeah. and I really enjoyed it. So, Six, that's, so that's like the seventh episode. So no, that's the sixth episode. Hold on. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. That's the sixth episode. The last four have to do with Rose. And no, so the sound of her wings is episode six, and the doll, the doll's house. Uh, hold on. The flapper. I know the song of the sound of her wings is yeah. No, so six. episode the doll house is. The sound of like okay, so the sound of okay, so the sound of her wings still talks about. I think the sound of her wings is still the episode with his friend. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. Yeah. So that like, that whole episode so was fantastic. Was really yeah. But is. like, fantastic. But even the scene in the restaurant, remember the diner? That that whole like that whole episode was in the diner. Oh yeah. That, that was so well done. That, it like, was so It original. was wild, and I really didn't think it was going to be as... It's not horror, but it's super disturbing. Like, yes. Where it, it goes and like what that becomes. And he's like... Because at first, you kind of like... He's a madman, right? Like, uh, you recognize that dude is mad. That dude is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it's like, maybe he's right. You know, maybe... You know, this is what people need, but no, 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 it it's isn't. not. No, yeah. that is not at all. <laughs> at first, you're, at first, you think that things are going interesting because yeah, the, the the waitress finds love in this other person, and you know, like there's you know there's certain nuances, but then it yeah. just turns completely dark, and it's like okay, <laughs> so I, I appreciated all those episodes. And then we hit episode seven that has to do with, so it's falling into cha- the comic book chapters, but I think episode seven really downgraded in acting and in storytelling. So it, falling Rose, which I think was a weak uh, actress that played Rose. I, she mm-hmm. was, she wasn't experienced and you can tell that she wasn't experienced there was like something really lacking, and then when she meets all the people living in that Airbnb, and like that house Airbnb, all those yeah. actors too, it felt like out of place considering the breadth of adventures uh, characters that you met in from episode one through six. There's something mystical mythic about episode one through six and then episode seven is very so, much based on reality yeah and, or not or more towards reality and but the interactions felt like you were watching a sitcom and 
I, it, it threw me out of place to the point that me and France, we looked at each other. It's like, what is going on? It's like we went all the way up down to episode 10. You know, I kept watching it because I'm like, I'm already invested. I can. So, like, what what I'll say is that what I'll say is that episodes one through six feel. Have you ever watched American Gods? Like the first season of American Gods? No, I haven't. Okay. It, it has a very similar feel to it. So, Neil Gaiman did both. Uh, Sandman wrote Sandman and American Gods. Um, he had a lot of influence in the show, at least on the first season. I don't know about the seasons after it, but it kind of has that same. Both the first and second season feel the same, right? Like where, like the first season, the first six episodes of this feel they feel dreamlike. You can't really tell how much time has passed. You you feel like there is like a. Uh, disconnect and reconnect and you don't know what's real and what's not and th- like this this otherworldly feel to it american gods does the same thing when you hit season two of american gods you know game game is a little more hands-off they have a new showrunner things feel a little bit more grounded in reality stuff like that um so it doesn't matter it just it, doesn't mix it, it does it, 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 that's it, what i'm saying it's it's not it's not that I, I I still enjoyed those last those last episodes. I did, especially like when they got to the serial convention. That was really cool to me because it was like it's kind of like wow, this is this is like this this concept right here to me is nuts. It, it, the concept might be nuts. I it, when it comes to acting, an actor can definitely take you out of take it can take mm-hmm. you out of uh, your your world and put you in focus in the world that they're trying to portray. And when you had so many bad actors intertwined in that, in those last uh, three episodes, four episodes, I, it really got me off track. I thought that uh, Rose's friend was also not that good. Rose herself, which she, she was the principal person in that, in that, in that part was lacking. Um, it just, there's so many things so, that the, the actors, know. I don't know if you noticed, but like most, like she's like she was playing a twenty-one-year-old, but I feel like she was a lot younger than that. She's twenty. She was. uh, She's actually twenty. So like when they probably filmed that, she was nineteen. She looks young. She looks just. It's just. It. it, She wasn't. I. I don't know. Like it just. Like I I get what you're coming from. I I like again. Like I understand. I'm not counter arguing or anything on that. Um, I was more focused on like what the Corinthian was doing. Right. And like all of that, everything that like the concept of the serial killer. Corinthian was great. He's a great actor. Like this, the, 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 the concept of the serial killer is actually from the actions of the Corinthian. Right. Right. So like that whole, that, that world that they're building and like, I, things like that is, uh, what I really enjoyed about the show. Right. I don't want to get too much into spoilers because we didn't do a spoiler warning like ahead of time um but like even the the what she rose winds up becoming i wanted an explanation i didn't want just the, it to end i wanted a, a explanation for it and they don't give it to you and that was, was my that I, was my biggest i was i was so ready to put rose's story in the background i just like, like it's this whole thing he's like even i don't know like they keep luring they keep like suggesting that they're going to find out what this is like why this keeps happening i mean there's and another dream is like coming, dream is like well i don't i don't know what this is even i don't know you know and i am i'm i'm more lord more it's like but bro like figure it out don't like don't just end it figure it out and they don't figure it out. And, like, that's where I was disappointed you know, at. You know, every time that, like, the person that I really enjoyed uh, seeing on the screen was Desire. Desire. Desire is. I loved I loved uh, how they presented them. And it was. But the heart. Yeah. Like, you see, like, you see the. You yeah. see Desire, st- like, like a statue. But then. When you check the heart, that's where Desire is actually at. And yeah. I thought that was so original. It's actually from the comic book that they're taking. They're, they're taking these notes from the comic book. I thought that was genius. Um, but I really enjoyed Desire. It's actually going like a, a one for one from my understanding is that like it's going like it's it's very faithful. Mostly. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Mostly yeah. it's one for one. Uh, there, there's some creative differences, but 
I I've, yeah. I've enjoyed I enjoy most of them. I just think that it's uh, for me. It's just so unfortunate that I feel that they were lacking money at the end, and they got yeah. a- I get they got actors that weren't they weren't good. They so, just weren't good. That that's that's kind of my thing right now. Um, it's a uh, it's a problem with Netflix. So you look at Altered Carbon season one, and that that sets up this beautiful world, this interesting world, and crazy story. And then you look at Altered Carbon season two, and you can tell that they had no money, like they gave them no budget. And it seems like an all too common thing throughout Netflix shows where the first season is just amazing. And then that second season comes out and you're like, what am I even like, is this the same show? Like, what am I even watching right now? So it's, with, it's, it's obvious it's, that like the, the way that they filmed, the way that they filmed salmon was very episodic. They actually filmed each episode yeah. and then you can tell the difference in budget in the last four. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, it, it's definitely noticeable. It, it's definitely like, man, like you did it. You, you did the Netflix thing in one season. Like you had a great first <laughs> few episodes and then like you just cut the budget at the end. And it's like, man, you should just release the first six and just had to end on that. And then see how people's reception to it. Because honestly, ending on uh, ending on Hob, ending on yeah. that uh, that guy, that would have been a great ending. You know, like yes. that's a good stopping point. And then yes. y'all could have went back and reworked uh, another season, and not you know, not overdo it. But it's still this this thing where they order a certain number of episodes, and so oh, you got to do something because they mm-hmm. paid for ten. You got to give them ten. So. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. Great show, though. I highly great, recommend that people great, watch it. Great first six episodes. I freaking loved it. In fact, I, I I would go back and watch the first six because they were really well made. I thought Morpheus was fantastic. That actor was fantastic. He definitely looks the part. And he definitely looks the part. I absolutely enjoyed when he finally got out of his shell or of like that, yeah. that thing that they were hiding and you can see like it was all dark and you can only see the eyes shining. Remember that yeah. that scene where you can mm-hmm. see the eyes? I'm like, wow. Like, it's, a, it's a it's a good looking, very yes. uh good looking and intriguing uh show. Yeah. I, I, I do think people should watch the last four. I still was entertained. I, but I get absolutely it. I mean if you're start if you're starting at you like it's like me, like the first the first two episodes after uh, like the after the, the best six were like okay well something's off and I kept watching it because I, I needed to see the conclusion. I yeah. just need a that I, I I like Dream. I really do like Dream. Hey, Yo, so you oh man, I need to find her name right now. But the actress that played uh Brianna Tarth from Game of Thrones is playing Lucifer in this show. Oh and yes. Oh my goodness. I I I I I, I loved it. I absolutely oh, I, loved it. I thought what it was so name? original how they fought. Yo, that's what I wanted to right? bring up. So hold on, hold on. You know exactly what that reminded me of? You ever used to play rock, paper, scissors with friends and some guy would say rock, paper, scissors and he would go machine gun? No. And then you, I, then, then you would go, well, I have an invisible, I have an impenetrable shield and he was like, I have a nuclear bomb. That's uh, exactly what they were doing. <laughs> That's exactly what they were doing, and just because I had that experience as a kid, it ruined that scene for me. It, it, uh, it ruined that scene for me. I thought that was so cool. Like I am the universe, and then I am dark matter. I'm like, <laughs> holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> that was that was very original, and I thought that the the whole scenery. I'm telling you, yeah, I do think that's why they had no money by the last four because. That it like visually, that was really good. It, it it was it was really good scene, and I love her portrayal in it. Definitely better than what she got to do. Uh, definitely he better than what she got too, to do in uh, he, Star Wars. Gwendolyn Christie. Too, hey, her name is Gwendolyn that, Christie. Something that they didn't explain in the in in the, the series in the season was there was a scene in Hell that he 
is stopped by a woman. Yeah. And then yeah, they do explain it. No, they don't. They don't really explain how. I mean, they they don't, they ex- don't go into it, and it's definitely something that they can dive in in the future. But I mean, they it's, they basically that, say that, why that, she's there and and everything. Why was she there? He sent her there. Because oh, that's right. He sent her there, but you don't. Oh, but you don't know why. No, I like exactly. you don't know why. It's it's like a mystery as to like obviously they were in love. She did something. He was like, "Yo, straight to hell." No, yeah, I mean, like the, it, it was it was interest it was interesting, and then you see the changes in color, right? Like yeah. he's a different character. Yeah, it's like what is going on here? Which it's like, I mean, it it begs it begs the question as in how um, fluid is his uh, appearance, right? Like, and then yeah. is it he perceived differently by different people? Which I would assume the answer is yes, because obviously uh. she sees him as this this black male, but everybody else sees him as this white male, but maybe other people, when he shows up different places, maybe like Hobbs saw him differently. Okay. And yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's because, um, the way that I got it is that they're not necessarily gods, but they're, they're aspects created by God to cover different yeah. parts of humanity. Right. So he covers the dreams. Lucifer is something completely different, but death and desire and despair and delirium, like all these other ones, cover uh, different aspects of humanity. So, they, yeah. did they call this dream call Lucifer sister or never does? Or I, at nephew? least I don't remember nothing like that. He calls because he he's constantly causing calling death sister. Right, yes, he said, "Oh, that's my, a, a my sister. sister and stuff like that." But he never. Calls but I think, for that. but I think, I think uh, Lucifer calls him something. Like I think it's little brother, or little nephew, maybe or something, something like, like that. I, I mean, I, I would. Yeah, I'd be interested. I'd be interested. I, I I want more of the interaction. I've never, you know, like I I fell off comics in in uh beginning of high school. It, so. it, it, it did it did it did make me want to read the Sandman. It's a four volume. It's four, it's four volumes. So I'm I'm interested. Anyway, all right. So next topic. Let me just double check on Discord. Next topic is DC shifts or trying to shift to the Marvel style universe. Oh man. Okay. I want to start so, off with the bat. Like they 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 shifted so much. They were like Batgirl sucks. Yo, <laughs> I'm so, canceling. Here's my thing, man. And this is kind of like this. This leads into. Like people's criticisms of D- uh, MCU, actually, we all noticed the problem with DC off the jump. Like as soon as they released Justice League, everybody's like, "Wait, where's like Aquaman's movie and where's Wonder Woman's movie?" Or you know, like, "Hey, you're y- y'all are y'all are really moving fast into this, right?" And now they're like, "Hey, maybe what we are doing isn't working, and we need to like go back and do the legwork for it." And they don't want to release a bad movie, and they don't want to. They don't want to put because like they they've already spent a good bit of money on they spent a good bit of money on Batgirl, uh, they spent a lot of money on the Flash movie. I mean, reshoots were happening recently. Uh, it's Ezra Ezra Miller is another one. Hey, like yeah, he's just, he's, he's ruining. He, he, he is a liability. Yeah, but he's a liability. Haven't, they haven't canceled it, and I don't think they're going to because they can yeah. still use they can still use that that movie to reset everything, and they can get rid of Ezra, Ezra Miller too. Like they yeah, because <laughs> I mean, Ezra Miller. The fact is, the Flash is he, he can travel into multiple universes, so it, like another Flash can come in from another universe. Exactly. I mean, they could use the it, guy from the actual TV show. Exactly. <laughs> For, <laughs> exactly. And I'm sure a lot of a lot of fans will be extremely. Ecstatic. I know a few people that would be very happy about that. I stopped <laughs> watching the show after like the third season, but I, I know it'd be a lot of a lot of people that are happy about that. Yeah, but. It, it, uh, Hold on though, but this this Batgirl thing, man, is like, man, that's it. There were people that were excited about this. I remember it being announced, and I don't care so much that I completely forgot that this was a project. So when it came <laughs> out, I was like, Batgirl canceled, and I was like, there's a Batgirl movie. I I, I knew of Batgirl because Michael Keaton was gonna come out. Yeah, and according according to the cancellation is. The movie wasn't received well when it was first shot, shown, 
And DC decided to, to cancel it because it wasn't in line with the vision that they, they want. And I, I, I think that DC is, they've made a, a controversial decision, but I think it's going to pay off in the long run because right now they, what they're trying to do is restoring the original image of the superheroes yeah. and focusing on the original superheroes so they can then expand to other superheroes that weren't as known. For example, the Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe use Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor. Pause right there. I just want to point out that those weren't their top tier heroes. Everything, all their top tier were licensed out to like Fox and Sony. And that's why we got the Avengers. The Avengers weren't ever like top tier A list uh, superhero comic I mean, Captain America like is but, the face yeah. of Marvel. So. Yeah. Spider Man and Wolverine are, but go ahead. Yeah, well, Captain America is a, one of the first, and and that's why it's called the first Avenger, right? But uh, yes, Spider Man and, and Wolverine, but those were the ones that they started, and they and they yeah. were pretty strong characters, right? And they moved forward. DC has extremely strong characters. I could argue uh, that they they have access to the strongest characters already. Batman. Superman, The Flash, um, those were the ones that they could have started with, done a separate movie for Batman, done a separate movie for Flash, and go about and then, and then have the Justice League, right? They decided not to do that. They decided to rush through things, and now they're paying the consequences for it. So now they're doing a reset. It's like, let's do a reset, let's do individual movies first, and then eventually maybe do a Justice we'll, League we'll, where everybody we'll get hits. We'll get back to that point. And that leads into what I was saying about Marvel in Phase 4, right? And they're introducing, we're in the introduction phase of all these characters. I know people want this connecting, overarching thing, but there needs to be the introduction. And yes. if you don't have the introduction, maybe Marvel has the wiggle room to just blast in, come in with your next big bad and have most of the properties address that. Right. But they're still going by like that same thing where we introduce, we present some problems, certain characters fix that problems. And then we move on and then we get our big bad, which, you know, uh, is that movie coming out this year at man quantum medium? I don't know, but that's the first introduction to Kang. Um, so again, they're learning DC, like Warner brothers, DC is learning from their mistakes and they're getting their 10-year plan, which they could have came out with 10 years ago. Um, well, not 10 years ago, but, you know, pretty damn close. I mean, Superman came out in 2013. Yeah, there you go. So, so it's almost 10 yeah, years. Yeah, almost 10 years and ago. Superman and Superman was supposed to start it. Superman did pretty good on the box office. You know, I know it, some people didn't like that movie because, you know, it wasn't a real... Like, to them, it wasn't Superman. Um like him not him because he killed General Zod because he because he calls out all that destruction that he killed Zod and to me I was like I I accepted it as a Superman movie because he was learning how to be Superman you know like he didn't spend X number of years in the Fortress of Solitude and came out like the perfect Superman I I I, I, yeah. do, I, I do fans and I had that issue when we first saw it because and the, the that Superman movie felt like it was it, it was meant to be like the ending of a trilogy. Because of all the destruction that happened, right? It was it was and, massive. It was it and it was a yeah. massive destruction. You're like, huh? This this seems like it's it started off really slow and just like completely just ramped up. Ran, yeah, uh, ran really, through the trilogy. A really good criticism I heard of that movie was just like the fights were like way too long. Like, yeah, the fights were way I, too I, long. I really did. I I didn't like the the fight between him and or I think Ulsa Orsa or something like that. I forget the, the name. The, the, the woman, so like, much, yeah. Yeah, the woman was pretty badass. I really liked her. Uh, but yeah, like I, they, it wasn't the best movie, but it, it did was, still it, did it, it still did pretty well, and it should have been a, a starting point. Yeah, it was instead a really of good doing a Batman point, yeah. versus Superman, they should have just continued they with, with a, Batman, and we should have got a Man of Steel too, or exactly. something like that. You know what I mean? Rather continue than continue it, but with with. Being on this right, and we're talking about the cancellation of these DC movies. 
Um, why hasn't Ezra Miller been fired yet? Uh, I think why, because... why does why does Ezra Miller still have a job? Now remember, um, they've let go they've let go actors for less, right? They've let go. Um, what well, Amber Heard got let go at, in her role after this this Johnny Depp thing. Mind you, Johnny Depp got let go super quick I, before I, anything I, was I... even proven. So why does Ezra Miller still have a job? Why is he still the Flash? I don't know. I I don't know. I do think that um, maybe a lot of money is riding into this. I think so. I think that. I think I think I think they put a lot of money into it, and and honestly, I also think that uh, it it's helpful that people like Ezra Miller as the Flash. He's an enjoyable Flash. So Ray Fisher, remember Ray Fisher played Cyborg, right? And Cyborg was supposed to get his own movie, and he called out Josh Whedon on his on his shit, right? On on how he was treating him and everything, and he was essentially let go and fired for standing up for himself. And I, I just want to say, again, why the hell does Ezra Miller still have a job? You get what I'm saying? I like I, I get I like this I, might I, be. I felt I felt I felt I felt that it like the whole the whole situation with um with how they dealt with the Justice League movie was unfair. I thought after you saw Zack Snyder's version of Justice League and you saw the important part of Ray Fisher and his father, yeah, I I was so amazed. That they cut off that very important scene. That was that was very impactful. I mean, the 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 I have my thoughts on on the Snyder cut. I I don't think that was a finished movie, and I think like people are like, oh, we're we're not really doing that many reshoots or whatever. I think I think a lot was done, a lot more than what's being led on was done. But I do, I do Those think scenes that from, was from Ray Fisher were already done. Though. But I, I do They're, feel like that was a way better movie than than anything that they put out by by miles. Absolutely. And even absolutely. like the ending with the, like showing showcasing just how powerful the Flash really is. And oh then like, because like when that fight, when you when he's fighting Superman, he puts up his hand and it looks like he's scared. No, he was about to phase through that motherfucker. Right, just showing just how powerful. Like he's not super strong or anything like that. Like, but he's fast, and that's his whole thing. He turned back yeah. time at the end of that movie, and so I. It was really cool that they that they showed that in a movie, like just right. how powerful Before that character flashes. is. Yeah, like just like the Flash is the Flash for a reason, and the reason. Speed Force is 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 that shit. And like you get what I'm saying, there's there's a place yeah. for every person on that team, and like the the cyborg getting an expanded story and all that, like it just cuts out. Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf was a way better character, but they cut all that out, and it was like, man, y'all cut that. For I think what? I think Steppenwolf was a, a very good character in this movie. Yeah, I thought he looked pretty badass. I loved that. I loved that Wonder Woman cut his head off at the end, and then the the head rolled into. Into Dark Seeds Realm, yeah, Dark Sides Realm. That was really cool. I yeah. mean, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed really that movie. Good I, movie. I, I, the Snyder Cut was really good. But back to the point, I think they made a lot of mistakes in the Justice League. I think overall, DC made a lot of mistakes with all those characters. With Ray Fisher, they made a mistake, and Snyder had to fix some of those mistakes. And then now. They're finally realizing that they made so many mistakes and they put a lot of pressure on Snyder to come up with Batman v Superman, to come up with the Justice League. And they're like, oh, OK, maybe maybe we did this completely wrong. We need to do a soft reset. And, when they and the soft sold- reset is Flashpoint. Yeah. And that's and- the main reason why Ezra Miller still has a job. But in, in my in my there we go. That's a good point. I didn't see it like yeah. that, but you're right. It's that's the that's the reason. It's they they're thinking of or they're thinking of options. I don't think if they're gonna get they're gonna get it canceled though. I think uh, I think the movie is gonna come out whether or not Ezra Miller is gonna promote it and whether or not he's gonna come out in future movies. I don't think so. 
I do think that it's still going to come out. And I think that it's going to allow the opportunity for other movies uh, to flourish. And I'm looking forward. I'm definitely looking forward to see what DC is coming out with in the next few years. Yeah, I mean, so I've never, when it comes, like, I like again, when back when I used to read comics and stuff like that, I would buy a few DC comics here and there. And they would never, like, engage. Like, I never got really engaged with them. It never really pulled me into the stories. I, I, I just couldn't care, like, enough, right? Um, found up real, really connecting with like the Spider Man stories, the X Men stories, stuff like that. And so, you know, when I think, but growing up and thinking about these heroes, thinking about like how it would be to be Superman, being, you know, basically a god on earth and having to treat everything as if it was, as if it would crumble in your hands and things like that, there's chances for these really good stories. And it's the same thing that I, I've been critiquing uh mcu for lately um get weird with it the snyder cut did a little bit you know it had dark side in there and stuff like that bring people that challenge don't just have the guy the 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 human guy that's trying to take down a god with the lex Luthor story and stuff like that right bring in somebody that can go blow for blow with superman bring in somebody that's as intelligent as superman and and challenge him that way you get what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. get weird with the stories like the comics books do. Like, uh, Multiverse of Madness should have had the God of Cthone in it. Hands down, it should have. Just because it would have made for a better, more interesting movie. Like, they're not getting weird enough with these movies because they want to keep, they're like, oh, well, we're, we might be pushing away certain people in the audience. People don't. Pe- this is a part of the culture now, right? This is part of the American zeitgeist. These superhero movies are here. They're going to be here for a while. It's going to be a while before people stop, like when the, the profits just stop making sense for them to keep making these movies. So get take the chance now. And they're and get probably going to slow down, it. and then and and, and then it's going to settle over. I don't think uh, superhero movies are ever going to go completely. And then away. just it, comic comic book like uh, movies based on comic book properties. Are, are big right now because I mean, Sandman is not a superhero, uh, not a superhero. Interesting movie, but... enough, Sandman was published by DC, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that it came out on Netflix. And it's like, but you notice, that like, was a it, it, like, certain characters are supposed to be other DC characters, like Constantine is supposed to be Constantine, it's supposed to be a yeah. male, and they gender swapped and stuff like that. So, yeah. there's still supposed to be a connection to the DC. But it's not connected. They just kind of made it its own thing. So I, I just again, it to me, the the real weakness I think uh, for a lot of these movies is just they don't get, they don't get comic book enough. Weird. Get weird. Fucking have 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 a plot where Wonder Woman's fighting Nubia. Like bring Nubia up. She she's Wonder Woman's sister. They were created at the same time. Fucking bring just have it. Have them have them duke it out. Fuck it. Like j- just get weird. You know, you know, in order in order to do that though, they have to start with Superman, and they completely forgot about Superman. That's the problem. That's the problem <laughs> with the DC universe. They they're jumping characters, and I think that was an issue with Batgirl. It's like they never really gave Batgirl a proper introduction in the DCU. So like having this character come out with her own movie. And then not being as successful or as good yeah, as it I was it sh- reading it a little be. bit of the article here in a, a little bit ago, and it was basically stating like that uh, they want they trip they basically want triple A quality out of all the movies they put out now, and this one wasn't hitting that. They want blockbusters, and Batgirl wasn't giving that, and so that's why they that's why they canceled. That's really why they canceled it. Um, I think I think even though they cancel it, I th- I don't know. Maybe if enough backlash is out, I think it will come out anyway. But I think do I do think that it's important for them to really start fixing their timeline. Yeah, and start really understanding. They need like, and it's the same same thing. Like when we we're talking about where what the problem with the MCU is in Phase Four. I think that they have a chance to do the same thing where they have a whole team. Like, like everything isn't resting on one person's shoulders. And they build this team that's responsible for continuity and the cohesiveness of what they're trying to build. And if they if they can get that right, if they can do that, 
then you know we will get better stories and we will get better movies and they will have a multi-billion dollar franchise on their hand because how the hell how the hell do you mess up superman and batman i know like everybody knows what that s is everybody knows what that bat symbol is how do you mess up these iconic characters like that batman is arguably the most famous superhero how do you how do you fuck that up how do you how do you how do you break the money the the, the money printer you get what I'm saying? And, and, and the thing is that they 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 started off also on the wrong foot because they started I don't know like I think what they're doing about separate timelines too now you have uh Patterson's Batman mind you I don't mind Patterson's Batman I thought he was really good I just it is doesn't fit in the continuity now of DC And like is what about is the, the Joker What about the Joker? Is the Joker in Joker. there or it's funny, man. Joker made a billion dollars. It is crazy. It's and boring as fuck. <laughs> I enjoyed it. No, yo, the I'm funny watching thing that is, shit. I'm like, yo. No, no, I, I, I really enjoyed I it. I really, I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I'm a, I was a fan of uh, jo- Robert De Niro's yeah. ta- Taxi Driver. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I was saw, seeing Taxi Driver and I saw this, I'm like, wow. Yeah, a I, lot of connections. I, I I get it. It it it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I like I wanted my money back or anything like that. Um, I just didn't enjoy it as much as everybody else did. Like, I think it, I I just appre- I really appreciated the acting. Uh, the yeah. Joaquin Phoenix as the actor when he starts dancing in the mirror and like like it, it like I'm like wow this is this is it this is when when he is born and the, at least in this cinematic universe. This is where the Joker is born. Yeah. Like he But it's not connected like until they connect it, it's not connected and it's its own thing. That's how I no, understood I, it. No, it's exactly. It's its own thing. Yeah. I'm not saying that's connected. I'm just saying that in this universe, yeah. this is where the Joker yeah, this is, is born. Where he's born yeah. And they and, and, and I, I felt I, I I felt it there that they did it really good. It's like he ran away, closed himself in the bathroom, and then he starts dancing and i was like oh this is just crazy i'm just like watching a crazy bored person this is where he is the batman's greatest villain is bored you wouldn't get it (laughs) it's that famous last that famous last scene that he says he's laughing he's talking to the psychiatrist yeah the psychologist he's laughing he's thinking about uh, bruce's parents dying in in the whatever in a side street uh-huh. and he's laughing about it and the psychiatrist asks what are you laughing about and he goes you wouldn't get it i'm like wow it's so, it was for me it was like this is a better story of how the joker is born than being thrown in a vat of acid oh yeah uh yeah definitely you know, it's like we're in a society. Like, society, society created the Joker, not not you know. Hey, yeah, it's it's <laughs> right, right. But no, um, I, I I have hopes. I have hopes for DC. I I because yeah. like as much as I'm not really a big fan of like DC comics and stuff like that, I still really like the the concept of Superman. Right, I really really do, and so like. I enjoyed the man is still. I enjoy seeing Henry Cavill play him because he's Absolutely. like the living embodiment of the character, right? Like he looks the part. You know, I think he did a great job acting. I think in the part. Marvel is trying to get him though. Yeah, if they can he's do, there. please. They're trying to put him as Cyclops. I see it. I see it. Should be yeah, him. They're trying to put him. That's the rumor, right? That's the rumor. I really hope that. Marvel fails and they put put him back in the Superman role. I mean, that's because why we're the, I think these, that, yeah. I think I think the reason why I think DC came out and offered him a job that is a Superman again, he declined. But I think it's because the script hasn't been written yet, and they have to write the script. I mean, Henry Cavill is. He's a pretty famous actor now, especially now that the he came out with The Witcher. Everybody that sees him, he's like, yeah, that is The Witcher. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, again, uh, I just, again, he, he, 
he looks the part more than a lot of other people that have played the role. He has the modern build, the way that he, what Superman's drawn now. He has that build. Mm-hmm. You know, like he he is a good actor, so he can carry that emotional range. And it's just it's unfortunate, you know, like, yeah, we got multiple movies with him as Superman, but it's unfortunate that we didn't get more movies where the movie was just focusing on him. And we got to see those, you know, those weird fucking villains that he has, Brainiac and uh, I don't know if Lobo is like a main super, Superman villain, but like, you, you know, like just gets again. Get crazy. We need like it. Thor needs Beta Ray Bill. Why haven't we seen Beta Ray Bill yet? We, we need Beta Ray Bill. Quit fucking around. Get weird with it because that's only going to make it because like they're proving that they can handle this stuff. They're making great stories and everything like that. But like, where the fuck is Dormammu? Why haven't we seen Dormammu again? Right? Like, get weird with it. Show me the weird comic book stuff. Make it live action. And fucking just deliver. So you didn't like, you didn't like Scarlet, Scarlet Witch as the main villain? I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Because, you know, the in Multiverse of Madness, and spoilers for the movie if anybody hasn't seen it yet, if you haven't, that's your fault because it's been out for a while. But the Darkhold corrupts her. They, they do mention that, right? But the dark hole was created by Cthone, right? And he was trying to use like, and if somebody in the comments or anything, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but he wanted to use her as a vessel or use her, right? That's why things are built around her. That's why she her vestige is is on and on the walls and stuff when they get to Mount Wondergore. So the idea that it was just the book that was there that corrupted her, not something behind that makes no sense it makes sense for her to be corrupted it makes sense for her to be focusing hyper fixated on finding her children right all that makes sense what doesn't make sense is that a like a book of evil energy turned her crazy i mean i get it yeah it it, like i enjoyed the movie but it's just not a it's not enough you know what i mean crazy all is like women get crazy and get power and they go crazy like that that's not no, enough. Like that that's not no, enough. I, so like as a So I guess Frances when she saw it she understood Scarlet Witch. Yeah, I again, uh, it's uh, definitely a point that you can use to control somebody. Right? Like it, it's like it's a, it's definitely a point no, you can I, use. No, I to control I don't somebody. think I don't think it was a control. I think honest So first of all, when you mentioned I didn't grab any of that that I thought that Scarlet Witch was making these decisions by herself, but I like there was the thing that was different about Scarlet Witch that I appreciated was that she actually had a valid reason to be evil. It's like where a lot of these people I don't didn't, agree, but I get I, what you're saying. I mean, when you the, when you lose a son, and it's a and more her, it's a more she, relatable reason to be evil. It's still not valid, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, it's not no no reason is valid, right? But for for her, it's like yeah, and that's that's, that's so that's, that, the, that's the, the, the feeling that I got at the end of WandaVision after ending the like the ending of that show is that yes, she was depressed. Yes, you know she uh, she was that's sad. That's MCU's fault for not using WandaVision as a stepping stone for my issue was is that I didn't get. I the vi- the 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 feeling that she was going to do any and everything to get her kids back. I didn't get. She heard the voices, which means that they exist and whatnot. But I didn't get that, that she was I, willing I, I thought, to murder. I didn't get the feeling oh, yeah. that she was willing to murder thousands, millions, just to get her kids back. That 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 feeling there didn't cross over well into the movie. And again, I like. If somebody like if you're presented a deal with the devil and they're like you can get your child back, yeah, yeah, most people would take that. Most people aren't going to make the decision on their own, and so the book itself is what corrupted her to get it to to go that far. Hmm. To me, it just it to me is not enough that it was just the book. You get what I'm saying? I I feel like there should have been someone pulling strings behind that to get something that they were using Wanda to get what they wanted. You get what I'm saying? Like, Wanda was doing what she wanted, but Wanda, I wanted, what like, I felt like Wanda should be a tool, because there's these extra-dimensional beings 
that they keep freaking hinting at, like that 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 one eyed tentacle monster at the beginning, Shumagorath, a mini angled one. They're supposed to be very powerful, right? And we just get one that's a monster and it gets killed off really quick. No, but that was so the hint. The hint was that it was Scarlet Witch. Yeah, no, no, no. They, they blatantly come out and say that. What I'm saying is, is that there are beings more powerful than Wanda that could control and manipulate her. And that would introduce something. I guess they, they, they don't want another big bad that soon. You know, it just hit me like that would introduce a big bad that they probably don't want to get. They want Kang to be that big bad. And it, they don't want to introduce something that big of a threat. But they did it with fucking Dormammu, which we haven't seen again. You get what I'm saying? Dormammu. Yeah, like, yeah Dormammu was a good villain. Like, <laughs> you, uh, anyway, I, I, I can go on way too long about that. No, no. I, 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 in, in any case, uh, Multiverse of Madness wasn't the best one either. I, I haven't seen a movie yet, apart from Civil War, that just completely left me shocked. I haven't seen, oh, and Spider-Man No Way Home. I haven't seen a movie uh, that's Spider-Man No Way Home's caliber that that is really t- like, wow, like this is a good yeah. movie. Spider-Man No Way Home for me did not disappoint at all. No, it didn't. And mind you, I already knew of all the spoilers because of all the Instagram and Facebook posts. That was, that was over. Man, how do you... How but even you, even you even like not no even, even 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 knowing the spoilers, I still enjoyed the fuck out of that movie. Yeah, I mean, like, there's one thing knowing, and then another thing seeing. And I don't know how I like. I have no. I I don't know how I can be like okay, like this is how you go without getting spoiled. Like, yeah, I like I saw like oh rumors that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are going to show up in this movie, but like I didn't know for sure that they were. You know what I mean? Like, think, because I keep scrolling. Kept scrolling, kept scrolling. And as if anything came across, I wouldn't pay attention to it. I don't watch it. I don't engage with it. I don't like it. I don't freaking, yeah, like, oh, like, I watch a channel called Heavy Spoilers on YouTube. Certain things, I don't watch all of his videos. You know why? Because I don't want to be spoiled on shit, right? So, like, certain things, like, I'll watch, like, a, uh, a video of his after I've seen an episode of something or after I see a movie stuff like that just to see like if what if i miss something that they might have caught same thing with like new rock stars and whatnot so like i went in i won't say 100 percent blind to it but a lot of it was surprises for me and like i was pleasantly surprised the entire time like and then letting william defoe get be william defoe yeah william defoe was um william defoe was and that that was a surprise. So like they focused a lot on Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Yeah. So I already I already knew it, but the way that they portrayed Willem Dafoe was phenomenal. Uh, the way that they they talk about what what else did that was oh Electro that was another surprise for me. Oh yeah, especially yeah. with the music that they used for Electro at the very beginning. That was. From Spider Man uh, Two, uh, the Amazing Spider Man yeah. Two, that was really good. So, with that man, um, just wrapping up and everything, uh, just gonna swing back around talking about Spider Man Remastered real quick. I haven't beaten the game or anything yet. Uh, have beat well, I haven't beaten the remastered. I've played the original and it came out on the PS4, but um, I'm just gonna say it, it's it's worth the money. I I rebought it. I'm playing it again. It's something that I said I would never do, you know, rebuying games on multiple systems because I did it with Grand Theft, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I I did it in Grand Theft Auto Five. And I'm like, too, well, but it's been years. It's been years since I've done that. So I was just like, well, screw it, man. And I, I bought that. I also got Red Dead Redemption. I um I got that on the Epic Game Store. So I'm gonna see if I can't the first or the second second one. Yeah, I got the second one. I'm gonna see if I can't get that running on my Steam Deck, and see if it runs all right. I'm gonna give it an actual try this time, because typically I fall off Red Dead within like the first hour or two. All right, buddy. I've... All right, we're done. <laughs> I think we, we're we're good. I think we we ran more than enough. An hour and eleven minutes. 
All right. Well, uh, with that, uh, you can catch us on YouTube, Apple, your major podcast networks and everything like that. Uh, if you liked it, leave us a like. If you're on YouTube, uh, comment, download it, do whatever you need to. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Shit. End. End. How about that? There we go.